The Ensemble podcast is intended for professional financial advisors. This content is created in partnership with our sponsor, Net Wealth Investments Limited, ABN 85090 569 109, AFSL 230 975, and is limited to publicly available information. Before acting on any general advice, you should consider whether appropriate and obtain financial advice from a qualified financial advisor. Ensemble does not hold an AFS license and does not provide any financial advice or services or endorse any general advice. If a PDS or IM exists, you should obtain a copy and review it thoroughly before making a decision. I'm Patrick, Head of Technology at professional services firm Collins SBA. I'm a former financial advisor who just loves solving business problems and creating better client experiences using technology. Join me each week as we unpack the tech on offer to advice professionals, stay on top of tech trends and help you break free from the analysis paralysis experience when building and maintaining a great tech stack. Discover a world of advice. Join Matt Heiner, CEO of Net Wealth, as he chats to industry professionals and thought leaders on the latest technologies, business models, changing demographic patterns, and general trends impacting wealth management. Listen at netwealth.com.au forward slash between meetings. This ad is presented by Net Wealth Investments Limited and does not consider individual circumstances. Seek professional advice and read the relevant PDS to determine if Net Wealth is appropriate for you. Past performance is not a reliable indicator of future performance. Today on the podcast, we're talking personal finance portals, client engagement, and open banking with Alex Chabotier. So Alex is the CEO and co-founder of Upworth, a tool that's designed to be the home for your personal finances and the first integrated mortgage broking tool that I've come across. All of this is powered by AI to drive insights as well as tools to help users make informed decisions and refinance or obtain home loan finance quickly and efficiently. Alex is ex-Quantum Black, which is the AI consulting arm for McKinsey. So I got pretty excited near the end of our chat when he started talking about the roadmap and introducing generative AI or a chat GPT style tool to their offering. I started by asking Alex what the oldest piece of tech he still owns is and whether he still uses it. Yeah, I, I, I like this question. Actually, it's a BlackBerry uh, for, okay. yes, for, for the young folks around here that is a mobile phone uh, if, if, the, if it needs a specification. And look, unlike uh, unlike Obama, um, I was able to ditch it before 2016. That all right. have any private security details, and uh, I'm lucky enough to now have a phone that plays music, takes pictures, and movies. So, yeah, yeah, I don't use nice. it anymore. Suddenly, oh no, I think um, the good old sort of QWERTY keyboard and the tactile nature of of clicking those keys that is is very cool. Um, what sort of phone are you using now? Well, oh, it's uh, not not very original. It's an iPhone, you know, like the. Nice. Um, for my entire life, I was either having like a Samsung Galaxy, then I had you know the BlackBerry, and then I joined the workforce, and my employer gave me an iPhone. You can't complain. I was very grateful, yeah, but they, they they got me into the the iPhone the matrix. Exactly. Gotcha. And it's yeah, it's it's definitely hard to go back once you sort of experience um, correct yeah. one or two devices in that ecosystem. Okay, and what about? What about AI? So are there maybe one or two cool ways that you're using that either personally or in your business? Yeah, well, no, look, you're, you're going straight to, to the core of it all, right? AI, AI is at the yeah. core of what we do. And, and I've been I've been involved in AI before before it was called AI. In fact, you know, I, I was working at, at Quantum Black, which is McKinsey's artificial intelligence arm. And everyone okay. referred to it as advanced analytics back then. And in fact, the, um, the whole idea of Upwards rests on using um artificial intelligence using technology to transform personal finances. So to give you a maybe a concrete example, uh, we use AI to automatically re- reprice mortgages. So let's say you, Patrick, um, and you may have tried it you know, in the platform and we created an account. Let's say you connect a mortgage, uh, we will pull all of your information safely, directly using you know the CDR regime, so the official open banking regime, and we scan daily thousands of mortgage uh, data points and price. We then are able to figure out all your personal characteristics. So it's not a generic repricing. We understand, you know, your LVR, the long term, the remaining balance, the loan purpose, the repayment type. And we are then able to give you an assessment of whether you could make a meaningful savings. And we give you an alert, which, which you know, in, in my view is as tremendous value. 100%. I think, yeah, as you sort of alluded to there, in preparation for our chat, I set up a an Upworth account and it feels like you've been... Uh, incredibly thoughtful about the little things 
especially just that onboarding experience is a really great way to build trust uh, straight up and to sort of make a difference. And it's a very guided experience. So, yeah, I'm really excited to sort of delve into the product. Thanks for saying, Patrick. Always, always, always great to hear. Thanks, thanks, uh, thanks for the mention. No, no problem. Um, but I would, yeah, I'd love to know how this sort of came about and where um, Upworth sort of sits in that advice tech space. And yeah, what really is the problem you're trying to solve here? Yep, 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 yep. I guess look, the uh, maybe for you know the, the people listening to us to understand a little bit more. Uh, let, let me tell you, you know what Upworth is and and where where it sits, right? And so and and then I'll go into the the problem we're trying to crack. I think the, um, what we are is effectively a technology uh, provider focused on customer engagement. Uh, our DNA is to be direct to consumer, which doesn't mean that you know we are not a great solution or a great companion for advisors or for professionals. Yeah. I think it's very important to stress because, and you, you said it yourself, you know, having tried our, our product, the the experience is seamless and uh, is intuitive, and it seems like very important to us. What we are not is we are not an automated advice or robot advisory solution. We are not a practice management software. We are not a CRM. We are not a provider of managed accounts. We are really that solution that helps you to form a 360 view of someone's wealth and to access unique insight. This is this is where we sit. We sit into this customer engagement, this digital uh, digital companion. Nice. And and yeah. And I mean, what problem do you think? Like what sort of what sort of made you go like as part of this journey with McKinsey and the sort of AI um, division? Like, did you just wake up one day and go, "We're going to solve this as a problem here with um, personal finance or whole of wealth"? Like, how did that sort of come about? Yeah, no, thanks for asking this question because look, it goes back to like the the why and like the, the passion behind it. I like to tell you that one morning I woke up with a genius idea. It doesn't quite work like this, so it yeah. was. <laughs> A bit of a longer process, but uh, in fact, yes, it, it, it does connect to my personal story. Uh, and I guess, look, the, f- for years, I actually worked for large companies on, on you know, analytics transformation, uh, including, you know, for a number of financial services firms in this country. And what I was seeing is like a treasure, you know, of data and, and very interesting problems. But at the same time, what I was seeing in, around me and my family with my friends is like a daily struggle and myself included with personal finances, missed opportunities. Uh, doubt, anxiety, and at some point, I, you know, I realized like this is here a disconnect, right? And I came to the realization that um, for for decades, the maybe the hidden and possibly most powerful advantage of bank has been their monopolistic hold on personal financial information. Right. The truth is that a few years ago, this paradigm changed with the introduction of uh, what is co- uh, called the open banking laws in Australia. This is the yeah. Unfortunately, a little bit little known yet by the consumer, the so-called consumer data rights, CDR regime. This regime is, is, is mind-blowing. It basically says you, as an individual, own your data. And as such, it empowers you to mandate any institution to share your personal financial information with any accredited third-party business of your choice. This is huge. And this was really the genesis of, of Upwards because I realized all of a sudden this data instead of being privatized and used in the interest of private institutions, can be used in the interest of everyone. And so really like what, what you know, got me to be very excited about this is I saw the possibility to crack an incredibly complex problem, which is how do you, you know, unlock everyone's richest life, put it this way, how do you make sense of personal finance and how do you solve this problem using data and using, you know, the breakthrough in terms of access to, to data and can, you know, AI and technological solutions that you can put on top. But that really, like, the key of it is the access to the data. If you had tried to do this, you know, like 15, 10 years ago, it, you, wouldn't, you would not have been possible. So I think really, you know, like, the, the enablement was there and the, the idea is giving back the power, you know, uh, to, to the people and, like, being able to provide, like, incredibly more value. I think, you know, to, to conclude on that question you asked, of course, fundamentally does three things. And it's all predicated on the idea that your money works better when all in one place. Number yep. one, you can have a full view to understand uh, your situation. That's the baseline idea, right? Around aggregation. Number two, you can unlock insights that only a full picture of your wealth allows. And finally, you can fast track your access to the best product and services by leveraging the info on site. This is this is our work, effectively. Nice. So three incredibly um, powerful and, and clear points there. 
I think you mentioned just before about the amount of data that's coming through. It can be sort of overwhelming when there's that sort of extent or quantity of data for just one individual. But I mentioned I set up an account. The way you've been able to just show what's important and sort of turn that sort of home screen into a really pretty and beautiful dashboard is is really impressive. Would you mind sort of taking us through like the little components that currently appear on the dashboard? I know you've got um, some widgets that are maybe coming soon, but maybe talk about what's coming up there. But you've got things like the control tower, uh, the emergency fund, like goal tracker, and even like a leaderboard, which for me was sort of just like, wow, like in terms of um, like my past experience as a financial advisor, the amount of times when I would get asked by clients like where they are compared to others in their age group and all that I could really respond what, respond with was sort of trying to think of other clients in their age group or like similar circumstances, which is not data, like it's just subjective. But you've sort of taken that further with not just age group but um, you know, Australian households as a whole and, and it looks like you've got sort of portfolio returns, which is maybe not so relevant here but obviously great data to have as well. But yeah, I'd love to sort of hear more about um, how you sort of landed on those sort of dashboard or, or widget components and and why they sort of appear there on the home screen and why you believe they're important. No, no, thanks, thanks, thanks for asking, uh, Patrick. And look, uh, it's it is funny you're, you're picking that one up. You know the the leaderboard because the we get very uh, contrasting reaction to this, uh, and they're very polarized. Either people love it and they okay. tell us, "I've been looking for something like this to understand where I stand." You know, a little bit what you're saying from from you know your clients, or we have people who hate it and they tell us this is a source of anxiety. I don't want to know, Alex. Don't tell me this. Don't you know, I don't yeah. exactly. Don't compare me. Which is also the reason why, you know, like I think it's important to mention that that feature is level, you know, coming soon. So, and I think like what I'm about to say probably answers your question. Like, well, we do a lot of A-B testing. So at times, you know, we put some features out which are labeled as coming soon because it is actually a way for us to test if people want them to be there, right? Nice. So yeah. in that case, for instance, I think what we learned is it definitely has its place there, but for a subset of people. We are hearing that, you know, we we need to profile people to understand exactly what they want to see there. And there are people who don't want to see that there. They want to see some things that tells them, you know, how they can, you know, put money on the side. So more being like a saving. So that's a different, you know, behavioral psychological profile. So really like the, the answer to your question of like how we land what is there is 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 A-B testing customer feedback, you know, iterations. To answer your first question, look, you, you, you saw it yourself, right? And like what you find there is it's a mixture of like descriptive data which gives you you know a sense of like where you're at for instance you know we automate your balance sheet and we keep it you know up to date with all the connections we also you know allow manual entries when the accounts yeah. you know cannot be connected you know at times your private investments you, you know on are not like easily tracked and sometimes you have people who just don't want to connect an account you know they are happy to just get manually so that is also allowed so effectively you have this type of data you know like you have the view of how your net worth, how the amount of, uh, you know, financial assets is uh, evolving through time. And then you have a layer which is around, you know, insights. Uh, you mentioned, you know, the control tower. Well, the control tower, you know, is basically the place where we control for all the insights. So one insight is you connect your mortgage and we'll automatically tell you when it makes sense for you to refinance. Another insight is the amount of uh, available equity you have built up in your pot, in your real estate portfolio. So we will track this, we'll monitor it, and we will let you know in real time, look, you know, we monitor every month the price of your properties, the properties you have entered. We know your LVR if you connected a mortgage. We're actually able to tell you what is the amount of equity that is available there for potential next property investment. We don't, again, we don't give advice. We won't tell you, make a property investment. That's not our role. You know, we believe it's the role of financial advisor to do this. And we position ourselves as the purveyor of insights. The third level are tools. You, you mentioned a great one, you know, emergency fund. So, you know, on that one, for instance, you we let you set uh, an emergency fund target. We think, you know, prudential, you know, control of your finances is important. You enter the target and we will track in real time what is the amount of cash on top of your safety uh, safety fund target. That's the kind of tool you'll, you'll also find in the in the system. Nice. No, that's really, really insightful. And it makes it makes a lot of sense just to learn that the coming soon features is really a good way to test 
whether someone's actually either looking forward to that or going. Like, yes, it's a bit of a sneaky, uh, sneaky way to, to test you know, what people like. It seems you like it, so it's a good, good indication, oh, Patrick. <laughs> yeah, switch it, switch it on. No, it sounds really good. Um, and the control tower too, I think, is really like you've, you've, um, you've built that in a really simple way where you've got sort of the levers and the lights there in terms of everything's either lit up to show that you've, you've got everything all sorted. But if maybe there's something there that's flashing and saying, you know, this is needs to be sorted, it's an easy way to hone in on what is maybe, um, you know, rather than sort of flurry, a flurry of notifications of you need to do this, do this, do this, it's just one or two lights that say, hey, maybe these areas require attention. Which is correct, really cool. correct, and we, we in fact do both. You know, we 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 prompt you with a notification in the system to tell you, hey, look, there's something to be checked. We will give you that, you know, an optic view where you're like, you know, okay, it's blue, nothing to do, it's orange, exactly as you said. You may you may want to consider, you know, that orange. Yeah, no, awesome. Um, I guess just back on the sort of the product side of of Upworth as a whole, do you normally get compared against any other sort of particular providers or even Things like neo banks, like who else sort of comes up in that conversation? I think, look, yeah, we obviously, you know, like people also like love pattern recognition. I mean, like myself, you, you for sure, you know, there's a tendency to be like, okay, how, what, what is it like to like categorize yeah. a product? And so I think, you know, what we hear is and it depends who you talk to. When, when you know, we talk to advisors, people do tend to think about my prosperity, which is a well known platform in the, you know, financial yeah. advisor community. I think a big difference they've emphasized to us is the consumer lens, right? Mm -hmm. So most of the platforms out there will have been designed first and foremost for advisors, which you would believe is not a good or bad thing, right? But where I'm going yeah. to is what we have heard is advisors telling us, look, our end clients don't necessarily use those platforms. Like we, we, we like those platforms. We struggle to actually promote those platforms with our clients. And so where we differ there is that the end client, which is your client as an advisor, but also my client, you know, as Upworth, he's actually the person who's going to determine if the platform is of interest mm -hmm. to it. So we took a very different approach, which is a tough, a tougher approach in fact, because like for anyone, you know, investing, it's, it's much easier to go and talk to professionals, sell to someone who has 500 clients, like basically be, you know, like at the volume and be like, yeah. fantastic, it's an easier go to market. And it has been the strategy mm -hmm. of, you know, very successful companies yeah. in this country. Networks up 24, that's how they run their business, right? But so, offers are slightly different. So, yeah, like that name comes up to mind, but with that major difference. And also, you know, all the platforms we have heard of, and I think you, you have a good inclination there, is like WeMoney, for instance. I think here yep. again, interestingly, is feedback we get is, oh, it sounds like it, because, you know, you connect, right. uh, you connect your accounts and everything, and that you get alerts. Where the comparison stops is when people get inside, they are like, actually, it's way more sophisticated. This is not, you know, just like getting an alert and uh, something which is supposedly personalized, but is not really personalized, it's actually personalized. And the, and all product that we, we are okay with that actually assumes that you have a certain level of education about uh, your finances. The, the truth is that it's not an entry level of product. We, I mean, we yeah. could discuss about this. We, we would love to do that in the future. Right now, it requires a certain level of understanding. If you don't understand some concept, it probably wouldn't fit every client entering a practice. Yeah. No, it, it makes total sense. And yeah, the point you raise there about how some other tools may be not actually being built with the customer lens or the consumer lens, at least the sort of first priority, really sort of um, rings home. And yeah, even sort of in our business going through that, that experience of trying to roll out a portal and really it's, it's to benefit the advisor or the advice team. And then the client, they're not secondary, but you can sort of tell that they are secondary when it comes to logging into the portal and, or not even logging into the portal because you can sort of tell that the clients don't value it if they're not logging in and actually using it. Um, but maybe, maybe that's how the business is being, you know, positioning the portal as well. Um, you touched on tools like we money. And those other apps where you can connect your, you know, financial accounts. I noticed on, I think it was LinkedIn, um, you had a particular post about all the Upworth um, uh, profile did on on credit scores and like credit reporting. Like, why do all those tools? And sorry for no um, sort of notice on this question, but why do all those tools embed like credit scores and credit reporting in there? Is that just a way for users to log in and? And check like is it a way to ping someone like why 
why are they all using that as a feature? Because it's something that has been widely successful in the US years ago. A company like Mint introduced that. Why is it successful? Because you basically tap into people's anxiety. So it's sad to say, but like basically people are anxious and you reduce complexity to a number. So the moment you say to people, look, there's a score about you and your ability to take credit. And if you don't look after this score, you are screwed in life. Yeah. Well, obviously, you're going to get people extremely worried about it, right? And they're going to be like, I need to obsess about this. And again, you make it simple. You tell them, look, everything that you think is complex about finance about your score. And so, you know, that's why that thing has worked extremely well. And that's why, you know, this is a great hook to get people to go into this app and, and look at it as an essential piece of information. The thing is, if you take a bit of perspective, Yes, it's obviously an important factor, right? And it's definitely, don't get me wrong, you know, like it's definitely like an an indicator which is extremely important in your credit applications. And if you want to take a whole loan, some lenders don't even consider you below certain scores. You tend to pay higher, you know, uh, interest rates, obviously. But it's such a simplification of, you know, what uh, financial wellness is, of like what financial uh, advice is about, you know, it's like, it's it's not about that. So that's that's basically the, the answer as to why this is so. This is so popular. Okay. It makes sense. Um, it is pesky. Yeah. And, and sorry, I'm jumping around as I always do in these episodes in terms of asking you one thing and no, going no, no, one no, no, pathway <laughs> and, then, and then that. But Bring it up. I'd love yeah. to <laughs> – thank you. I would love to talk about the – I guess the refinancing or home loan capabilities of Upworth. I noticed, as I said, I've said multiple times, I've created an account. I've sort of gone through that sort of user yeah. experience users might be sort of scared or delighted either way to learn that you can refinance in as little as four minutes. But I'd, I'd love to sort of learn about how you sort of built that process and, yeah, talk to us sort of about the, um, you know, the automated refinancing aspect and, you know, whether a, a human or a broker gets involved on the other end. Like just sort of talk to us about that functionality if you can. Yeah, no, entirely. So look, you just, you know, for, for the sake of transparency as well. So when we talk about the four minutes, it's effectively when you have a complete upwards profile. This is an important, you know, mention to make and because it's, go- it's going to explain what I'm about to say. So what, what we did and, you know, when we designed upwards is, and what I thought about is, okay, what is the sort of pain I'm going through when I make, you know, a financial product application, typically a mortgage and, Basically, is that like it's it's time consuming, it's tedious, you know. And, and if you think about it for for three reasons, the first one is your financial information is abundant and dispersed, right? So it's time consuming and stressful. You need to like go and like fetch it. You don't exactly where it is and everything. The second reason, second aspect is the parties that you must share your information with have no easy way to access that information, and it's the, bur- the burden is on you. So it's manual and time consuming again. And finally, many times the processes to apply are ill-designed and they're not, you know, designed with your best experience in mind. So it's frustrating and it's time-consuming. So if you take those three things, you know, I ask myself the question, okay, like how do I tackle those three things? And the answer is creating a financial passport with certified data. And this is effectively the third, you know, I talk about the three level of upwards. This is the level three of upwards. So why are we able to do it so quickly? Because we effectively digitized all the key questions that, you know, you're basically your the compliance aspect of, uh, you know, accessing consumer credit uh, requires you to ask. You know, it's it's not that you can do whatever you want. You need to ask for, you know, customer uh, objectives and uh, situation. You need to also consider their preferences. You need to ensure they understand different products. It's entirely yeah. digitized, so you can actually go pretty quickly into this. The key part about, you know, your financial data is if you have, a, you know, a full upwards profile, you're going to have in there your bank accounts, your superannuation, you can you could have you know your investment accounts, your properties, your existing mortgages. So everything that you need to collect, the point one I was mentioning before, is right in there, up to date. And with CDR data in the case of the bank accounts, so actually certified. So what we do is if you go through our process to refinance, you'll see that there is a step where you literally validate your financial information. You're like, I validate that one, I validate that one, I validate that one. You consent to this being shared, you push it to us. And here you go. And you're going to be able to basically like book, you know, a phone call with the broker. Mm-hmm. We do believe, yeah. you know, like the process is not entirely digital. And actually like yeah. legally, we also required, you know, to talk to you to understand who you are, your situation. 
But again, I make it very easy. It's a digital call booking. It's something that you do at your convenience. And that's how, you know, like pushing that application takes about four minutes. So it doesn't mean you're going to get to decisioning in four minutes. Of course. But it means that in four minutes, we're going to be able to, in fact, in one minute, we're going to be able to tell you which mortgages would be the best for you because you're going to tell us like, this is what I want, this is my preference, my product. Since, you know, back to what I said at the beginning, since we scan the entire market, we can give you, you know, like the best possible options. And in about four minutes, you're going to be able to push all of that information. So that's that's how it happens. And yes, it's basically a hybrid solution. So it's a solution where all of the burden, we are trying to reduce it to the, a minimal amount for you as a user. And then we work in the background. We are basically mortgage brokers, integrated mortgage brokers. Hmm. And we do basically all the work you know uh, that needs to be done in this capacity. And you have the ability to interact with a mortgage broker. You could, you could literally talk to us. We also have a chat. Hmm literally the talk to a mortgage broker was uh you know uh, licensed to do so directly in the chat in our platform wow so you you've eliminated or not eliminated you've made the experience of data gathering and providing data a really easy experience for users or consumers that's traditionally a valueless activity for for a human or a broker to say i need you know this checklist which is the manual email of pay slips and bank statements yes. and all that sort of stuff <laughs> Yes. So, I mean, and it's a hybrid solution as well. So, my understanding would be that this has the potential to be like an incredibly efficient way for clients of financial planning firms to either refinance or obtain finance as part of their strategy. So, whether that's, you know, um, borrowing to invest or renovations or whatever the strategy is, is, is that something that's um, on the radar or, or are you already working with, with firms in that way? What, what do you sort of comment? No, I'm telling you, look, this is, this is exactly the horizon. You know, like Upworth is there to give you the full view, give you the insights you need to have, the right insights, and then allow you to act on those insights. Again, without delivering the advice. And I think that's why, you know, I, I very much welcome also the opportunity to come and talk on this podcast because the reality is we are very open, you know, to, to work with basically the financial advisor community. We don't see ourselves as, you know, advisors. In fact, we're not licensed to do that. And we don't want to do that. You know, that, in fact, would be illegal of us. That's not our job. We see our positioning, which I said in the beginning, as, as being different, you know, as being like a technology provider. And so I think there is a lot of room here for whoever is willing to partner, to definitely partner on that front. And we believe we can bring tremendous value, simplify, you know, life and greatly improve also the relationship with the advisor for all the reasons mentioned. You know, I mean, we didn't go into it, but if you think about it, and we have actually financial advisor who told us so. We we basically automate the information collection, which is usually very painful and usually also very inaccurate. So many times that I think so of your listeners, you probably relate to it. As an advisor, you you have to go after your clients. It's not the best way to start a relationship, to ask all this information. It's inaccurate, which has an impact on the quality of what you're going to do as an analysis. Then you have the burden of actualizing this information all the time. And then actually, you don't necessarily have a common denominator, a common base to have a quality conversation. This is what we solve, right? And then you can focus on the value add, which is the advice and really coming on top. And in fact, improving your productivity because it's all the time that you were spending before on those non-value add activities, even if you do outsource them to, you know, re- resources on the side, you're still involved in this and you still have to manage impact on the relationship. This is all now taken take care of, basically. Yeah. No, amazing. I think, yeah, most of us as sort of financial planning advisors, I'm retired by the way, financial planning advisors or advice professionals have had at least one poor experience where we've introduced a client to a a broker and, you know, whether that's from a communication perspective or data perspective where it just hasn't gone smoothly and, you know, you can always sort of feel like that the client isn't their priority as well. So, yeah, there's nothing better than a sort of warm referral or warm handball when you know that the experience is going to be consistent it's going to be quick as you sort of allude to there about the sort of four minutes of um you know a, a totally complete upworth profile and that's another incentive to make sure it is complete as well right like Correct. You, this process will be quicker if everything's there um obviously we're, we're talking about a lot of data being provided and sort of flying around uh, I think you've sort of mentioned on on the website and on LinkedIn sort of military grade security. Do you mind sort of talking about that and what that actually means? 
Yeah, no, this is this is this is super key. So actually, thanks thanks for providing me the opportunity to detail that. And I think it it takes on two aspects, right? Which is both cyber security and data privacy. And I sort of like to divide it this way because it's a bit distant. On the cyber security side, I think if one thing, you know, like the the access we have to our CDR actually requires us to comply with quite a long list uh, of uh, security requirements. You you cannot access yeah. this regime just just like this effectively. Sure. And so what we do is, yes, uh, we basically encrypt uh, our communications. So we will encrypt your data, it's basically at rest and in transit. So at rest, it means uh, on our servers. So the data here is encrypted with the, the highest level of data encryption. And we also encrypt the data in transit, that is to say, between our databases and your browser. So that's the first thing that is actually encrypted. Second cybersecurity measure we have is, and I think that's very important to mention, is we actually don't have any access to your login credentials. As, and I know it can, it can sound a bit surprising because people are like, but wait a minute, I'm actually logging in. Logging in and yeah. so, so why, why are you saying this? Is that, that doesn't make sense, right? So I log in and you tell me you don't have the login. What, what the hell are you saying? Actually, no. Why? For two reasons. The first one is we do not actually perform that activity ourselves. It's performed through a partner company. So in our case, on the CDR side, we work with Adatrip was basically like a dedicated professional service firm that does that for us. Mm-hmm. And the added thing is that when you do use the CDR regime, so the official Australian government regime, you actually don't enter any password. If you have gone through the experience, you may have noticed you're going to enter your client number and your bank is going to send you uh, an OTP, a one-time password, on your mobile oh, yeah. or in your app, which basically is an added security. You're not you're not sharing your password. The case Just is when you... back. Yeah, yeah, yeah please. Right. Yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The case is when you do share your password is because we have to go through what's called scraping. And uh, I'm sure you know, some yeah, of your listeners so, will. The, I guess that's the, I was going to say the good old days, but the questionable old days of um, before CDR, right, in terms of actually physically logging in, which would actually render, uh, at least in the past, if you had fraudulent activity on your account, your bank could be like, well, no, you've logged into something else that's actually not authorized. Um, sorry, I've def- definitely cut you off there, Alex. No, 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 no it's not a conversation. <laughs> it's, but, uh, but no, no, but look, on, on scraping, we effectively, uh, look, it's still, we still have to use it because all the assets are, are not accessible in, in the CDR regime. regime so yeah. superannuation, investment accounts, that's the only way we can access it. But even in that case, so yes, you do enter your login and your password, but we do not access it. Basically, we do work with a partner, a third party, we can't access it. At a certain level, we do not have any right to take action on your account. We only have a read, we have a read only access. So even if you know you connect your accounts, I can, cannot decide to do something. I cannot do anything on your account. Yeah. So I think look, it's it's sort you know, of like a list of security, you know, measures we, we are taking. I think you know on the privacy side I was mentioning at the beginning, it's it's super important to us as well. So yeah. basically, we obviously respect like data privacy laws in Australia. All the data is stored in Australia, and we use AWS with you know Australia-based servers. And we actually have gone even further. So if you go into your account, you have the ability to disconnect or delete any account you've connected in five clicks. And so many people have told me like, this is very stupid, Alex. Like you know, you shouldn't allow your user to leave in five clicks. It's like yeah. Look, I haven't created Upwards to lock people in my world. This is not the point, you know. You control Upwards, Upwards does not control you. And so, in yeah. fact, it is important for me that you can disconnect very quickly. And once you disconnect, not only do we stop to read your account, but we also erase all the historical data that we had accrued. The downside is, well, if you want to bring that account back, well, we'll have yeah. lost the history and you'll lose the, the quality of insights that comes from that loss. But, but I think, you know, and thanks again, it's important to mention that that right to oblivion is is key to us. Yeah. Now, I think it, I would sort of make a similarity to uh, maybe it's far reaching, but sort of no lock in contracts. Like the, the ability, the door is always open, which is a, a really easy way to build more trust as well, right? Like you can leave at any time. We're not holding you ransom. If it's not right for you, then it's not right for you. Um, so I think that's a, a really I think it's a great feature, to be honest, and circumstances do change and all that sort of thing. But I would also just ask on the 
like yes, we have the the CDR, so the consumer data right and open banking. Have you found it difficult to like in terms of the experience of when you connect that account, you only get that data from the date it's connected? Have you sort of have you experienced in that sort of catch twenty two of of the open banking regime where you've got data from a point in time and not historical data? So it's really on the user to get it connected ASAP and then sort of reap the benefits of tracking progress over time, maybe two or three months in? So look, yeah, the, I mean, the CDR is still some way to go. You know, like there's no expert yeah. in this country that will tell you that it's all perfect. And so what we find is at times the connections fail. And so obviously, yeah. you know, like our user will target to us and be like, you know, of course it doesn't work. Well, it, yeah. the, the, it's more complex sometimes. Yeah, we, we do have a yeah. failure on our side and, you know, we assume that we work out to repair it. But Many times it's in fact that this very connection doesn't work through the system and the pipeline of the CDR. You know? And so that still happens too too often. The other thing linked to what you said is the data that comes in is um, uneven. Uh, some CDR participants, the data holders as they are called, do provide extremely good data. Uh, you know, uh, I won't mention banks in that podcast at the point, you know, to like shame and, and reward, but yeah. some banks actually have done a very good job. And like we see, you know, over and over that we get very good data from them. Some yeah. banks on the flip side are passing to us very bad data. You'll be appalled. Yeah. There are times, you know, we connect a mortgage or we receive can be, you know, uh, original mortgage balance. This is actually oh, wow. not at all what the bank should be sharing with us. What we've found, though, is that, look, there are ways around it, you know, like there are ways to enrich this data, to like pass it together. So you, as a user, you wouldn't necessarily experience that. You wouldn't see those failure points because we worked actually to create a journey where we make sure that what's going to be saved in the process is correct. And at times we may ask you, hey, spend 30 seconds. Here is everything we have been able to pre-populate. And if you connected a bank account, you probably went through this experience. What you saw is, you connect something and then you're going to have those validation screens, right? Yeah. And you may have seen, oh, that's cool, you know, like everything is populated or maybe sometimes something was not there, you know, and you're like, okay, all I have to do is say that it's like this, but it's yeah. fine, you know, it takes you two seconds, you review it, you validate. That's how we have walked around, you know, the issue we're seeing with uh, with the data, the data access and data quality in, in, in open yeah. banking. And then I, I guess by default as well, that sort of consent period, I know this is not limited to Upworth, but yep. that consent period is a maximum of, of one year, right? Like Correct. Are users yep. needing to sort of re-consent every year uh, or go through that process again? How does that sort of work? Exactly as you're saying. So it's basically okay. a, legal, uh, it's a legal constraint. Like the, uh, the max amount of time you can connect or you can consent to share your data is one year. Uh, it's, yep. uh, in a way, I mean, it's, it's a good protection, right? I mean, it's, it mm -hmm. participates in this period of saying the goal is not to lock you in. You know, if in one year time you're like, look, I did not necessarily love it or, you know, I didn't get what yeah. I wanted out of it. It's not that you have forgotten it and, whoa, you know, we get all of your data without you not even yeah. realizing anymore. Fair enough. You know, we believe that hopefully we will have convinced you and you will actually be like, damn it, I'm going to lose access. I'm going to lose the insights, you know. So, yeah. I'm not. honestly, like, yeah. yeah, pretty comfortable with it. Yeah. No, cool. It makes sense. And it's, yeah, a relevant level of sort of urgency to say, do I want to keep using this tool? Exactly. Or maybe you've gone through a year ago you know, seven different personal finance apps and they're all trying to reconsent and you go, jeepers, I forgot I had those apps on my phone even though I deleted them, you know, six yep. months ago. So it makes makes total sense. From a from like a type of consumer or type of user, is Upworth sort of are you suited to everyone or is it at the moment probably more I'm not going to say simple, but maybe consumers or users that maybe don't have additional entities, they might have you know, PAYG, so sort of standard either joint or individual accounts uh, as well as a, maybe a retail or an industry super fund or would it cater for maybe a business owner or someone with maybe a complex structure as well? So, yeah, look, lo lo love the question. I think the, we can, we created in Upwards to basically cater to like a wide spectrum. So yeah. what you'll find is you're able to like leave it pretty simple and be like, look, I'm just going to connect one, two bank accounts, I don't have anything else, you yeah. can do this. It will be very quick, in fact. And we we are working these days actually to add more insights on this to tell you, for instance, could you earn more, you know, on a say on your savings uh, account and automate that okay. for free for people. Right. So right. that's already like good value basically. And we don't get paid for that by contrast to other players in this market. Uh so actually independent. Uh and uh, I think, you know, 
we have built it so that you're able to entirely build your personal financial operating system, to call it this way. Think of, of course, like a gigantic uh, Excel, way more friend, way friendlier, where you don't have yeah. to uh, write the formulas Everything yourself. To spreadsheet. Yeah. Exactly, and understand, you know, like what you, you don't need to have the knowledge to build mm-hmm. the entire system. The system is built for you and is distilled to you as a simple, simple enough console. Why am I saying this? Because you could actually like use Upwork at a pretty advanced level. You could add in their ten properties. Uh, that you know could be in uh, ten different countries. We will automatically handle the different uh, different currencies. We will automate okay. all the metrics to track your properties. You could basically enter, you know, the bank accounts. Uh, you could enter, uh, you know, a private uh, equity position that you enter manually. You can actually even say it's in this trust to so allow you to track things okay. by uh, holding or entity, attaching yeah. them to a trust. We c- you can say like legal entity. Say so, okay, trust uh, Patrick. Cool. You yep. can put under that legal entity as many holdings as you want, and then you can actually track the performance of that entity or of the nice. of the you know the the single uh, the single holding. Another thing is, think about SMSF. So something we're working on, you know, like usually many yep. people would potentially have SMSF, not necessarily superannuation retail fund, as you mentioned. We are like the good thing with SMSF is like about ninety seven percent of the SMSF administration um, market is held by three uh, software providers. Yeah, okay. As, so effectively, the question, like, people approach the question saying, oh, I'm going to do this. SMSF is discrete. Could be it's anything. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But it's, like, it's actually not that wild from an integration perspective. You're basically yeah. 97% of the market are three providers. And mm-hmm. so we already have Class Super, which is 50% that, you know, is available yeah, in the platform. BGL, you know, Super Concept are the ones we're working on. But so I think yeah. the answer I want to provide to you is, you can go very simple or you can go very far, right? And so it yeah. gets us to like quite a wide spectrum and, and we keep building. We, we are in fact like very open in our approach to say, look, uh, please give us ideas. You know, you, you told me at the mm-hmm. beginning, oh, you know, like that thing I like, you know, coming soon. Yeah. All mindset is like, hey, tell us what you want to see there. And we, we are basically like we are co-developing with you guys. Yeah. Awesome. No, it's, it's, that's really great. Um, I, I guess just on that, like, have you? I know there's there's obviously a roadmap for this product, but are you able to give us any insight onto into what is on the development path or anything that maybe is sort of years down the track, but you'd love to see in the platform if the data was there or if it was, you know, able to click your fingers and it would appear tomorrow? Yeah, it looks so. I um, I don't think in years, Patrick. I think in uh, okay. in weeks, in days, is basically like we, you know, we 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 live on a very short time span. So basically, mm-hmm. I guess you know, like three big things that we are working on. We are working on them because all users uh, told us, look, those are the things you know we're the most excited about, or the things that we don't see in there today, and we would like to see. And as I said, you know, that's we we, we live and die by what the people ask us. And so there are three yeah. things fundamentally. One is around Gen AI, uh, and I can okay. say more about this uh, in a minute. Yeah. One is around uh, cash flow management, and one is around worldwide account coverage. Gen AI, look, we are working on, on products that will probably be, you know, Australia's first in the field, uh, possibly worldwide. Yeah. Basically, take your banking app, right? And imagine that all of a sudden, it has a view of all your assets and liabilities, and you are able to chat seamlessly as if you will be talking with a person, right? And imagine yeah. that, let's take an example. Imagine you want to buy a house, right? But uh, you have no clue where to start. It's a very common situation and you you, you yeah. may relate. I mean, in that field, or, you know, uh, it, yeah. that happens all the time. People come to me and they're like, I want to buy a house, but I don't know. So what happens, right? I mean, that system will tell you, all right, let's break down the problem, right? Okay, which house price can you afford? Let's start there, you know, and what do you want to do with house? Do you want to invest? Do you want to live in? Okay, cool, right? How much will it cost you per month? How big of a deposit do you need? How could you save and how long would it take, you know, to save that deposit? Will you be able to be, you'll be able to have that conversion in real time, right? And the thing is, yeah. we've already done a big part of like having the rules that, you know, will inform that system. And yeah. this is, this is really a priority to us. But the, the way we see this is our well, aim is you have a valuable AI copilot and that can be, you know, someone that answers all your analytical questions again. No advice. This is really like the line we are following. And we see this as a great tool for advisors as well, create the mm-hmm. kind of hybrid advice that client asks for today. 
effectively a large chunk of questions of analysis can be automated. And because of that innovation of, you know, generative AI can now be addressed in, in a natural language uh, manner, mm. which, which is probably the description of the customer experience. And then again, the advisor can focus on providing the advice, you know, like there is a ring fence where we say, look, you're now asking me an advice, you know, like, I mean, I, I told you how to think about uh, purchasing that property. I help you figure out, you know, what is within your means because your bank account is connected because I see your entire wealth. So I did an analysis, but I cannot tell you if the right thing to do is that or that. Well, talk to your advisor. Maybe it's a client who already has an advisor and we're like, you should turn to him or do you want to talk to an advisor that that becomes you know, the possibility to refer those people to an advisor because they, they realize they've qualified a need. And in fact, they'll be way more engaged and way more inclined to talk to that advisor. Definitely. I, I think that's, that is so cool. I mean, the time it takes now, like if you just wanted to query that co-pilot on how much you've spent on, I don't know, dining out this month, like that would just be as simple as asking that question naturally Correct. rather than jumping into whatever card or bank accounts and exporting that to Excel and, and trying to find the category that way. Like that's Correct. That's a really, that's a really basic example. Um, but it's a great example. Because that, that example is actually so like the – to, to, yeah. to manage expectations, you know, like the what we want to do first is actually work on bank accounts and work on yeah. the or mortgage space, which being mortgage mm-hmm. brokers is, is quite natural to us and we, we understand well, right? And so the question you just popped is is a very good one because it's, it's actually one that comes very, very often. Okay, P- People yeah. actually ask many times, you know, like, what am I spending? What am I spending on? And interestingly enough, that's something that today your bank applications will, will give you. But mm-hmm. somehow... People are not completely satisfied with that. They want to. They want to be able to interact yeah. more with that information. As you said, I they want to understand too. the trends. You know, I'm with you. And people don't always use the same bank for every and category of, of expense, right? Or even yeah. income. Like you, it, you, it you, makes you, total you, sense. You, you, you said it. You took, you took the word out of my mouth, which is <laughs> Upwards connects all your bank accounts. But but I think it's an important one, which is the the limitation of a bank is by design. They will always push their own products in their interest because they, they, they are basically both product provider and the distribution channel. And so it's in their interest to push their own thing. And they will Definitely. rarely give you that entire view, which is which is the value we aim to provide, you know, and to tell you, look, yep. we are connecting all your accounts and you can query that. So yeah, look, yep. that, that general aspect is one a big thing we're, we're, we're working on and, you know, cash flow management and worldwide account coverage, which I'm happy to delve into as well. Yeah, no, I'd love to hear more about... Um about yeah, cash flow and, and worldwide account coverage. Yeah, if you wanted to give us some cliff notes on that, that'd be much appreciated. Yeah, no, sure. Look at the, the on on cash flow management. Uh, I guess if you get it, take a step back, and you, you you probably have seen it in an upwards. Today we automate uh, ba- the balance sheet creation and actualization yeah. and counting tabs, right? And clients, you know, users told us, look, I love it, but I like the cash flow side of thing. You know, where's the yeah. cash flow statement? Was the PNL right as well? Yep. PNL is a little bit more complex. Takes you know like dividends. Uh, you know, like you start going into things where you know maybe you don't capture it through the bank account. So I don't want to get into the technicalities. But yeah, yep. what we realized is people are actually very excited about the cash flow side of things first because it touches on their expenses, as you said. You know, so like what flows in, what flows out, their income, like which ties up with their borrowing capacity, service ability. So you touch on that single aspect as well. And so what we're working on today is being able to add that element and really giving you, in the same spirit of what we have done today, it's working on visualization to be very creative on the visualization side. So not have a boring list of expense by category, but visualize things in a way where you understand proportionally, you know, how yeah. things flow from one side to the other, like how it changes through time, uh, really like giving you that understanding and some granularity around income as well, not just yeah. inflow, like what, what, what is inside yeah. inflow, you know? So we're working yeah. on that. We found that talking to advisors, that's also something they welcome and something super critical to their work, you know? And the last one, you know, worldwide account coverage. Um, look, simple analysis, like 30% of the the population in Australia is bought abroad. It's it's, it, it's, it's okay. mind-blowing to me, you know? It's like it, yeah. it tells you a lot about the diversity of the country, but it also is a very interesting angle because 30% of the population typically retains links with yes. the rest of the world. And those yeah. links are also financial. Whether, you know, they still have a bank account there, whether they own a property, 
whether they help their family invest in, in the local, you know, uh, interest. And so what we found, you know, is people told us, oh, wait a minute, this is next level. You know, if, if actually I can connect my thing in Australia, but all of a sudden I can connect my accounts in, in France and in, in the UK, in the US, and I can add in one place that entire view that I can never reconcile where the currency aspect is also taken care of. Wow, I will love it. You know, I pay for that. That's been typical ads. So I think yeah. that that one personally excites me a lot. You know, like that, that yeah. vision of, you know, giving you that yeah. worldwide view is, is super exciting. Yeah. So, yeah, instead of everything in one place, asterisk, and the asterisk is Australian assets only, that, it makes total sense. And, yeah, as advisors or retired advisors, yeah, there's always that, that percentage of clients that do have international assets and you you probably don't even talk about them because you're in Australia and, and talking about their Australian assets and then that comes up and you get this magical statement which is in a different currency and, you know, is it included in bias? Is it not? Does it go yes, on the balance correct. sheet? Does the income get included? Um, and there's sort of obviously legal restrictions too on providing advice on, on assets outside Australia but I think it makes total sense to have, as you said, everything in one place. And, yeah, just on the cash flow side, like that is a massively – underserved um, scope of advice, especially in financial planning firms, but it's probably one of the most powerful, especially from a accountability point of view and being able to actually tell someone or project to someone as in clients, whether they're on track or whether they're going to be able to meet their yep. objectives or goals or not and what needs to change. Like it's a really good and easy way to provide accountability and just say like, hold up, why are we spending this much on this? Or even in in a more sort of positive sentiment, um, you know, you're save, you're essentially saving too much for um, your what you've what your objectives are. So you know, don't feel guilty in spending more on maybe this holiday or upgrading to business class or things like that. So I think they're three incredible, incredibly powerful roadmap items, which I'll be really excited to to log in in the next few weeks. I think you alluded to Alex and see them live on the platform. I'm joking. But um, yeah, Alex, thank you so much. You're being tough on me, Patrick. Good one, good one. Yeah, I'll um, no, I'm I'm definitely just playing around. But yeah, Alex, I really appreciate your time, and and thank you so much for sharing everything Upworth. Uh, I'm really excited to see where this platform goes, and and whether it sort of ends up in the hands of advisors as well or advice practices. But uh, yeah, w- what's the best way for someone to learn more about the platform or or yourself? I guess, look, uh, no, just first, thanks a lot, you know, for, for having me, Patrick. I mean, the, the, when you reached out, I was like, yes, this is, this is a really cool idea, you know, and so it's been, been a very enjoyable conversation. Hopefully, it will be a great yeah. segment for everyone listening to it and saying thanks, you know, for giving a try uh, also uh, to the platform. I guess in terms of, you know, reaching out, I guess, uh, straight to the Canada, of course, probably, in, you know, one thing, it's free. Uh, you know, something we didn't mention for this uh, conversation, yeah. it's actually, you can, you can create and access those tools for free. So it's probably something you may want to check. Then again, you know, as I said throughout this um, this segment, we we are very open to any collaboration. So you you can reach out to me. You know, uh, my name I'm sure will be displayed as you de- you know uh, distribute this uh, this podcast. You can reach out to me on LinkedIn. Uh, you can uh, write to me. I'll even give my email address. Uh, maybe I will reread it. Uh, so you can write to me to Alex at uh, Upworth. So U P W O R T H Upworth dot com dot au. And, and literally, yeah, let's take let, let it from there. I think the whole mindset is to, is to grow at and also with the advisor community. That's, that's the goal. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, every, um, yeah, all relevant links and info will be in the show notes. So, yeah, once again, thank you, Alex. Thank you so much, Patrick. Thanks a lot.